Hello, it's your girl Sin, and today's video is going to be all about research. Mm. And I'm going to be the first to admit that research isn't the thing that really gets me excited, but you're going to notice that it is a requirement for most graduate programs. Meaning, you got to accept it, you got to learn it, you got to perfect it, master it, all that stuff. Before we get started, I just want to say that this video is going to be very surface level. I'm not going to dive deep into research methods because we've already taken that class and you've probably already taken stats. I promise you with those requirements you will be ready to take on the next challenge and that's possibly doing research in your program. So let's go ahead and jump into this video and continue on with the series of I.O. and learn together of what you may expect in a future program. So I've kind of touched on this already, but let's kind of talk about why we need to do research or why it's something that you need to prepare for. And first things first, like I mentioned, it might be in your program. So I highly suggest you do your homework and see what you're going to get yourself into. The curriculum is usually posted online, so you can take a look to see if you will need to do research or if they're not really focused on. Some of us out there may enjoy research, so this may get you really excited to do your own. And you never know, you may work to get published if that's an, a goal of yours and that's super cool. Your own research will also help you with the process of becoming more comfortable of actually conducting your own research. In the beginning, you may be nervous, but it's really interesting what you gather and what you find. And you never know, like I said, you may work to get published or you never know how many doors that can open up for you. And of course, I have a few tips for you if you decide to go along this journey and sign up for a program. For one tip that I have is start now. Meaning, if you're already contemplating starting a program or if you're watching this video, start looking up topics that you like and that you enjoy so that way you can start getting familiar with what's hot, what's trending. This is going to help you out tremendously because you're going to be ahead of the game. It doesn't have to be necessarily scholarly articles, although I do recommend you check out Google Scholar and kind of type in different topics that you like, see what pops up and read them. You could also look at magazines or books, but the point is here that you're already getting those wheels going, so that way when you're assigned your project, you already are ahead of the game. If you really don't know where to start, I recommend the method of a brainstorm bubble. Here's an example of the one that I made. See the best way that you're gonna narrow down your ideas, and the thing is, you might not find something that you really love, but if time is ticking already and you're already in the program, the ball's rolling, you're gonna may have to just pick one. And do feel like quite a handful of us did do that because you just want to do so many things and it's so hard to pick one. But because of time restrictions and because of just, you know, getting this assignment done, sometimes you just really have to narrow it down and just pick something and roll with it. You're married to the topic. I would not suggest to go back and redo anything. As soon as you pick it and you tell your advisor, just don't change it. If you have to choose between an applied project or a thesis project, both still require research, but I totally recommend you try to do more the applied route. Again, this can vary based on the program, but the reason why I recommend that is because you're actually working with an organization and you're going out there and actually helping them survey their own employees and figure out some data for them and provide feedback and suggestions. Pause. So I really want to say that this could be a great opportunity for you to get exposure and experience if you don't have any really great opportunity to put this on your resume as well. I think I might have mentioned this before, but the reason why I did not do that route was because of the fact that I was working a full-time job, so I just didn't feel like I could dedicate myself to an organization as much as I wanted to. So I ended up doing the thesis route, which I still did have to do research, but it was just my own research, and it definitely prepares you for a PhD program if you choose to do that. So both routes are pretty beneficial, but it's kind of your own judgment to see which one would be better for you. Definitely wait out those pros and cons. You have to have fun with it. Like, really have fun with it. Don't be scared. It's a process. Do things little by little. Don't just try to do the whole thing in one month. Give yourself time. Breathe. And you'll get through it. <laughs> oh yeah. And my last tip is to not be afraid to ask for help. Ask for help from alumni or your advisors or other fellow students. I love YouTube and I depend on it heavily as a resource. So one of the things that I would do was I would look up like how to tweak survey monkeys or how to run certain t-tests on SPSS and I would just watch those over and over and over again. But don't forget to do it with a smile even if it's tough. You have to do it with a smile. You may be thinking how am I going to get started with this? And it's pretty much by reading. That's how you get started with it. And that's why I really suggest you start now. You'll most likely have to do a literature review, basically piecing together all those articles that you find within similar topics and tying them together to present your idea 
and your reason of furthering that research. It's lengthy. It's tough. It's not easy. You're probably going to have to go back and revise it multiple times, but trust me. Again, you can do it. <laughs> I did out all my articles that I had and highlighted them all and put little tabs on each article to kind of look back at what I liked about them and think of your literature review as a puzzle and presenting the reason of why you want to do this research. And then, once you finally have your literature review down, or at least maybe not the full thing, but a general idea of what you're gonna do, then you're gonna present that information in your findings and the skills you're gonna use over to the IRB, Institutional Review Board, a group of people within your school that says that your research is ethical and the steps you're gonna be doing are safe, it's not gonna put anyone in danger, you're gonna be able to keep the information anonymous, they may push it back a couple times just to kind of get clarification on things. Submit it and get that in as soon as you can because if you don't have that approval, you are not supposed to be doing any research. So you need to get that approval before you can start. Most of us use Google Docs. You're going to hear me say Google Docs, but I really meant Google Forms. So Google Forms or SurveyMonkey to create our surveys. I used Google Doc just because I liked the simplicity of it. Men joining Facebook research groups where you share your survey with other students and usually it's an exchange so that you'll do their survey, they'll do your survey. And of course my last tip is to just try to make your survey short and sweet. There's this really cool feature on Google where it can show you the progress on the bottom of the survey which I think is super cool because then if you tell somebody, oh yeah this survey is only like two minutes long and they're seeing that progress, they trust you, and they're most likely to share that with other people if you ask them nicely and they see that it is short and not lengthy. I remember being in my research class at Cal State Fullerton thinking, I don't know if I could do grad school <laughs> because of research and because of all this. And look at me now, completed. <laughs> Checked off the to-do list. I'm still waiting for that expensive piece of paper in the mail, now that I think about it. Anyways, I hope you found this video helpful and I hope you are excited to join a program. You're going to love it and it's going to be challenging, but you're going to be able to do it. You just got to stick with it, go through it, go through the motion, ride the wave. Before you know it, you're going to be at the end of the tunnel and you're going to be completing everything, submitting it and getting it approved. I wish you lots of luck and let me know if you have any questions. Please be safe. I will see you guys in the next video.